My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. The first Sunday of Lent ushers us into the Garden of Eden. The Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food with the tree of life in the middle of the garden. God invited Adam and Eve into this delightful garden, inviting them to be happy there and to eat of the fruit of the trees, save for one tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God invites our first parents to be happy and warns them not to eat of one out of a whole garden of delightful trees. And what is temptation? Temptation is a lie to lure, to entice, to trick. This is what the serpent does. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? And Eve falls for the trick, for the lie. She's enticed and she gets into a dialogue. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's not like that. We were told. Oh, so you were told that what? That, no, back him off it. Doesn't matter. Eve was in this forest of trees that were delightful to look at and good for food. And she begun to be blinded by the tempter's lie to lure her away, to entice her, to trick her. She could have rejected the temptation. And certainly, Adam too could have said, No, darling, I won't have any of that. Look, we are surrounded by all these delightful trees with delightful fruits. Why would God allow the serpent there in the first place? Could he not just have put up some kind of electric fence to keep Adam and Eve away from getting too close to the tree? Only the tempter tempts. Only the devil lies by luring us away, enticing us away from what is really beautiful. God doesn't tempt us to do good. God invites you and me to freely choose what is good because it is good. And to avoid what is evil because it takes away our happiness. Isn't God running a risk by giving us his freedom? Yes. But he prefers to take that risk. So that when we do good, it's because we want to do what is good. And we reject whatever separates us from God. Jesus Separate from me whatever separates me from you. It's a short prayer that St. Joseph Maria used to pray from time to time. Separate from me whatever separates me from you. The Christian vocation is an invitation to be happy. Choose the good because it's good. And avoid that which is evil because it separates me from you. All too often, Christianity has been branded as, as a religion of don't do this and don't do that and don't do that. We live our faith like little school kids who don't do certain things because they fear punishment. I remember when I worked as a school teacher some years back, uh, this was in a primary school, the students needed to get their homework signed by their mother or father. And it was a way of encouraging them to do their work well, decently well at least. <laughs> Every now and then, there was a smart aleck in the class who would forge the signature of one of his parents alongside some slapdash assignment. <laughs> For the teacher, it was ridiculous. You could see right through that signature. You're kidding me? Your father signed this? Yes, sir, he signed it. <laughs> By faking the signature, and doing your homework badly, you kid yourself, you're cheating yourself because you're misusing your freedom. And 
That's not how we live our Christian life. It is not doing things because I fear that God will punish me. Rather, I know that I am in this garden with delightful trees, delightful fruits, and I have the choice to choose them. I'm sorry, Lord, for the times that I don't choose what is good. Be merciful, O Lord, for I have sinned, for I acknowledge my offense. My sin is always before me. A clean heart create for me, O God, says Psalm number 50. And today's gospel is astounding. Only the tempted tempts. Only the devil would try to lie to you, Jesus, Son of God, to lure you, to entice you with false promises. Not once, not twice, but thrice. And each time you reject the temptations and use your freedom to love what is good, your Father's will. Temptation is not a sin. Even you, Jesus, were tempted. Teach me to reject temptation. Teach me to elegantly ward off the temptations, the lies of the devil. Those temptations that came to you, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels. The devil even quotes scripture. All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. Three times tempted. Three times victor. Why do you, Jesus, even allow Satan to get close to you? Christ vanquished the tempter for us. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sinning. This is what we read from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 540. You allow yourself to be tempted, yet you say no to temptation. You choose what is good. Thank you, Jesus, for journeying with me, for showing me that there will be temptations along my path, three, three hundred, three thousand, or through my life. And you vanquish the lies of Satan with the sword of your love for God's will, for the good, nourished by sacred scripture. Change the stones into bread, the devil says. Do a miracle for your own benefit. How many times am I tempted to think of myself, to dwell on my problems, to live my faith like a school boy, school girl? No, I will not consent. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Can I read some verses from the New Testament every day during this time of Lent? To know you, to know your word. Temptation, throw yourself down. Disrespect the life that you have received from God by harming yourself with habits that make you sad. Jesus, am I a victim of endless scrolling? Does it sometimes lead me to sites that take me away from you? How do you want me to use my phone this Lent? Could I do a fast? Hey, could I do a mobile phone challenge with my friends to fast together with others and say, let's try this out? Third temptation, worship the devil and you will be happy. And I, with your words, Jesus say, get away, Satan. I want to live in the freedom and happiness of a child of God. And I know through experience that choosing you, Jesus, always fills me with peace and joy. Choosing the good because it is good. And that's always the best option. Your will. Thank you, Lord, for taking the risk of my freedom. I know that temptations are not sins in themselves. I know that I shouldn't dialogue with temptation. I know that with your grace, I can also build good habits that help me to say yes to you and no to the evil one, the tempter, the only one who tempts. To say yes to you through a routine or daily scripture reading. Maybe that mobile challenge that I take up with some friends that will help me to work better, to spend quality time with family and friends. A firm resolve to say yes to you and no to the tempter 
who only knows how to tempt, to respond to your invitations joyfully. Thank you, Lord, for the trees that are so good, for this freedom that gives me happiness. Remember, O oh most loving Mary, that never was known that anyone who fled to your protection or sought your intercession was left forsaken. Inspired by this confidence, I turn to you, Mary. May I grow in love for your son during this time of Lent. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.